we can start doing this. So as you know, we're going to do the BP. We're going to do the on-screen training. Ooh, this is called the on-screen training. What it is all about. Just want to move this so that you can see the whole screen. There we go. And get that for me. So we need to turn your machine on. It's going to say hello. This is what we call an opening screen. We'll go into that later. And you just click on the screen. You can either use your finger or the stylus or the touch pen and just touch the screen for your machine to come alive. It's going to ask you if the, or tell you that the embroidery uh, unit is going to move. So keep your hands away from the from the carriage and this is just a calibration it's the sequence that the machine has to set or start up so there's no way getting around that right. and then we have embroidery all my design center so either way let me just see which blind is bothering us I think it's this one there we go otherwise there's no light in here Okay, so we are going to start by going into our manual. So that's just pressing the second one. If you press the first one, it's just going to bring up your Wi-Fi connectivity screen, which is on page six, but we'll get to that in a moment. So pressing on the menu, we're going to just run through all the settings that's on the machine. You have your needle down position. This is where you customize your machine. This is up to you. I prefer leaving my needle to end in the upright position and not go lower. I don't end up in the lowest position. The reasoning for that is the only reason that your machine would really stop, the embroidery machine specifically, my sewing machines I set up differently. I set them to end with the needle down. But for an embroidery machine, your machine only stops really when either the thread has broken or the picture or the thread color is done. And then you want to remove the frame. And when your needle has ended in the downward position, you have to press your needle up down button, which is this one right here, to lift your needle. And which kind of def defeats the purpose. You just want to like carry on and remove the frame without being or without being worried about breaking needles. So that is why I leave my embroidery machines on the up, the needle up position. I see Maggie's been able to join us. Great. Just as we started. Hi Maggie. Wonder if she can hear us. She's still connecting. Let's just give two minutes for Maggie. Oh, there's Maggie. Hi, Maggie. We just started. Glad to see you. Okay, so we just started and I said the needle up down position. I prefer leaving my embroidery machines on an upright needle position so that when the picture stopped, I can just remove my frame. I don't have to press my up down needle position button over here to lift my needle out of my embroidery design. I can just pull out the frame. The second one we have here is a needle positioning um, stick placement. So if I turn this on and I just move here to my needle, you'll be able to see when I press, I don't know if you can see the needle right there and I want to see the button. So the needle is in its fullest upright position and if I press the button, you have to lower your foot, that's why the machine is yelling at me. It lowers just halfway and then completely. So if you wanted to see where your needle placement would be, that is a button you could use there. It's something that I usually leave on off, it's not one I use very often because you just have the needle down button on the, on the, the body of the machine. You can insert a mouse, but it has to be the one with a cord. It doesn't do Bluetooth um, mouses, but you can choose the cursor on what shape you would like it. So if you decided to use a mouse, then we have the upper and upper and bobbin thread sensor. So this one should always be on because you want the machine to notice when thread is finished in the bobbin or if the thread broke uh, on top. So if you leave that on, it will just carry on and you have to pay attention to your machine. Next, we have the machine speaker. So if you turn this up, I don't know if you can hear it going louder or softer, but I prefer a softer sound. I don't want that beep, beep, beep all the time. It 
gets annoying after a while or you can just completely turn it off if you choose to. Then the light is this light right here. So if I lower it, five is the brightest. And as you can see, it dims that light or turns it off completely. So if you are light sensitive, that's a good one to use over here. But we like to see what we're doing. And when it has a little, a little block around it, it means that it is the machine's default setting. Next, we have a screen display brightness. So it means this screen you can make lighter and then it almost kind of disappears or you can make it brighter again depending on if you're light sensitive or just the, the settings you prefer going on to the next um, page page two we have our eco mode so that means it's it's basically the same as your screensaver on your pc so after 30 minutes your that, that opening screen that came on when we turned the machine on that pictures that was rolling through after 30 minutes my machine would go into an eco mode. Oh, I missed, I changed it to around. The screensaver is those pictures. Eco mode means your machine screen goes black, but it doesn't turn off completely. And then after an hour, it's a complete shut off mode. So it's just like a safety feature. We don't like the machine standing on for hours and hours without doing anything. So you can just say, so maybe you've gotten busy with um, dinner or something like that you can have the machine shut off after 30 minutes completely and you just have to come back and touch the screen and it will come back on. That opening screen that I accidentally said there is here where that, those pictures would start running. So I usually say after 20 minutes, just as a screen protector, same as with your computer, your screensaver comes on and those pictures would start running and you can just touch the screen to say, hello, I'm back. Okay. Next, the next one right here, it's this one, it says opening screen. You can decide when you switch on your machine, should it open on the opening screen, on the home page, or on the embroidery screen. So I'm just going to turn this off. I have to stretch and turn it back on to show you just the differences. Okay. This one is your opening screen showing you all those pictures. So if you go into your screensaver mode after 20 minutes, this would show, but I'm gonna say hello. This is what's called your home screen. So this is called your home screen. And then that is your embroidery screen. So you can optimize it to be quicker, just as you wish is how you can customize the machine. Some people prefer that it just open directly on the embroidery screen and they can just start embroidering. Then we have quite a few different languages in this machine from English, Dutch, French, Italian. Oh, the first one was German or Dutch, Spanish, Danish, and the list just goes on. If your client can read any of the um, other languages and they prefer the machine in other languages, you can set it up for them in that manner. Next, we have page three, which is your service or total count, the machine number, and the version of software that's currently on the machine. But just to go back to these top two, your service count would be zeroed once it has been for its first service. So this is the total count of the machine, so total number of stitches it has worked, and this one would be zeroed out as soon as it went for it. So, so you can keep count of every, for this machine, every 3 million to 5 million stitches, depending also on how much you use it or a year, whichever comes first. So you can keep track if you want to send it every three or five million. We prefer you send it on anything from three, between three and five. And then you can just keep track and count on again. The version, you have to update your embroidery machine you would go to the Brother Solution Center and search for BP. You would go to download and you would download the latest software. You would then uh, copy the software to a clean USB and you'd insert it into your USB slot. When the machine's turned off, you would press this needle button, turn the machine on and it will take you into your update screen. And you would then just tell it to load and it would load the new update for you. 
on the Brother Solutions Center, it would tell you what is being updated. So the latest version of the BP software, it told us that the magnetic frame will now be able to, or the machine will now be able to read the magnetic frame. So that's a great plus for us. In the next one, see here we're in the embroidery settings at the moment. First one was the machine settings, now we're in the embroidery settings, the frame settings. So when you turn, let me just see where we are, oh yeah, go. So we have different frame sizes. You get your 360 by 240 and your 180 by 130 with the machine with the decals. The decals are this, uh, for the Snap app and we'll do that at a later stage. We'll go into depth on the Snap app. But for now, we're just gonna do the embroidery side of things. So you do get a nice, let me just go to the big one. There's the big one and as you can see, it gives you, let me just turn the grid off. And you can see right there, it gives you a little outline just on the inside. So that is your 240 by 360 frame. But the machine can do all the other frames. It can do the 200 by 300, the 240 by 240, two by 200. That is the 160 by 260. You get a, that's your five by seven. You get a 100 by 180, 150 by 150, 100 by 100. There's also a 100 by 100 frame or the four by four, if you want to do inches available with decals is an optional extra that's the only other one that's available at the moment with decals and then you can also do the 60 by 20. Okay. so i prefer oh you get 100 by 300. i prefer leaving my machines on the biggest frame the only reasoning for that is when it's set on a smaller frame and i want to bring in a picture that says or that the size is, uh, five, let's do a five by seven, which is 180 by 130. The machine is gonna say that the picture is too big for the frame. And then you think, but um, I know my machine can do these big pictures. Why doesn't it wanna take this specific picture? It's because your frame was selected here to do small pictures. So that is the only reason I prefer leaving my, my frame size on the biggest one. Some people prefer changing them as the frame they are busy using. But the only thing that I'll kind of say kind of defies that purpose is our machines are able to read the sizes um, of the frame that you put in because we have notches or these little triangles on the side of the frame when it slides in. So either way, you always have that safety in place that if you've accidentally brought in a big picture and used a smaller frame that's not going to fit, as soon as you go into your embroidery machine, the machine is going to tell, in the embroidery side of the machine, the machine is going to tell you that um, you have the wrong frame in the machine. So you have that backup system for you right there. Next, we have the embroidery grid. So you can choose, do you want a little red dot in the middle or a little red plus? Do you want no plus? Do you just want the size of the frame? Or do you want a 10 by 10 or a 25 by 25 millimeter grid? Again, just how I was taught in embroidery, I prefer a 10 by 10 grid. It's just how it looks. It, everything just fits. If it's, if it's blank, it's almost like I cannot see where on the on the frame it's positioned it's just how my eyes have adjusted to the grid and the positioning on the frame but this is all up to you this is again where you customize your machine then next we have thread color so you can either the machines default all of the machines default on the number of colors but for the number of colors to work it has to be digitized right with the right fabric brand or fabric thread brand so here at the bottom, we do have Madeira, uh, Poly and Rylan, Sulky. This is the Robinson Anton, uh, again, the Poly and the Rylan, the Sulky, going the other way. Isafcore we do have. Gutemann, we have some of them in South Africa. This one we don't really have. Iris, Floriani, I haven't seen. Or you just leave it on embroidery. Like I said, for the number of the colors to work properly, let me just go out here. The picture really has to be designed right on the digitizing software to give you the right code here at the side. So now you can see it says 017 embroidery 
instead of telling you, changing it, that it prefers a light blue. Not that you have to work these colors, but it just tells you instead of color, what, what was it, a one zero one nine, it now tells you it wants a moss green. So that is the only reason for changing those two. Go in there. What's going on? Oh, I locked the machine. That's why it doesn't do anything. Touch it with my finger. We'll go to that one now. Okay. So if you please, if you sell a machine, please change the setting for your clients. When you go through the, the machine settings, change it to name of colors. I have had people write out that color one, two, three is red or one, five, seven is black. So just to save them a lot of time, change that to name of color so that there's no struggles. Next to that, or beneath the, the thread color and the thread brand, we have our maximum embroidery speed. The machine can go up to 1,050. It was slow because I'm being I'm busy doing um, in the hoop project and it can go down to 350. So some people prefer running their machines at full speed. Either just go one down. If uh, It also depends on the project that you are busy doing. So freestanding lace, you have to go slower down to anything between 400 and 600 stitches per minute. And I was busy, like I said, doing in the hoop project. So my hand was always somewhere in the machine and I didn't want to stitch over my own fingers. That is the only reason mine is slower now. Then you have your embroidery tension. It defaults on double zero. You rarely, and I mean really rarely, have to intervene in the embroidery tension of your machine. Um, the BP3600, from the 2600 or 800 and up, you have automatic tension units. So your machine would adjust depending on the thickness of thread you insert. So it is very, very rarely, if you find the chief to intervene here in the tension, it, it might be just time to clean it out a bit, look at it, or send it in for its service. Below that, we have our embroidery foot height. Defaults on 1.5 millimeter. But again, if you are busy doing free, uh, freestanding, freestanding lace, you can lower it a bit. Or when you are doing the multi, the in the hoop project and you have multiple layers of fabric, like you have the lining and the batting and your outer fabric. Sometimes you have a piece of leather in there and you have your zip. You sometimes sit with anything from four to six layers of fabric and batting and it, it, it becomes thick. So that is then when you would up your embroidery for tight. So you can play around with that one. Very nice feature to have. On the next page, on page five, we have our units. So do you prefer setting up your machine in millimeters or in inches? All up to you. Um, I prefer the millimeters. It's just easier to read. But again, it's also because mostly we're in South Africa. I, I do believe that the Americans set theirs on on inches. Then next, we have a cool function. I kind of like this one. It's um, you can change the background of your embroidery screen. So if you select it, it would change this background. So you can change it, let's say green. So someone tells you, for example, but they want uh, a green tractor on a green shirt. You can edit that. Let me just show you, see in the changes the background of your embroidery screen so you can see but this picture is not going to these colors are not going to look nice on the green and i'll show you later how you can change these colors as well of your designs so just for a clean look i prefer to have it on white again personal preference then you can also change the thumbnail colors so just to show you this is what we call thumbnails. So if I go in there, these are our thumbnails and I can change the background color of them as well. Let's choose a nice, or let's do red because we are busy with red work there. And now you can see, you can barely see the pictures. So it will also help you to determine if someone wants a specific color on a specific background, you can really just show them it's, it's not going to work. So just, but for that clean look, I prefer to have my background on white. Then you also have a thumbnail size, which is a great one. We leave ours on the biggest because we want to see what's going on. We want to see the pictures on the screen. You can change them to have them smaller as well. 
and then they look like that. So again, personal preference, all up to you how you wish to set up your machine. Then we have another great feature that's only available from the BP and the XB is the embroidery basting stitch. So a lot of people prefer if, if they are float, using the floating method to use a basting stitch to stitch around the, um, the picture to keep the stabilizers from moving. From moving. So the setting is, is in the, or the function is in the embroidery side of the machine, but in your settings, you have to choose how far away from your embroidery picture. It's always a square or a rectangle, but how far away from the picture do you actually want that basting stitch? So ours is on our default, which is five millimeters. And you can lower it, you can do it closer, or you can do it further away. This is all up to you. You can go up quite far. You can go up to 12 millimeters, so 1.2 centimeters. You can go away from your picture. Like I said, you have to select in your settings how far away do you want that and um, that basting stitch or the basting distance. The next setting we have is our uh, applique distance. Again, the, the feature button is in the embroidery screen, but in your settings, you have to tell how far away from your picture or from your design would you like that satin stitch. So here I made it quite far away, but again, you also have a default setting. Some, there we go, of three millimeters away, from, uh, yeah, three millimeters away from the picture. So we'll play around with this one a little bit. Then next we have the LED screen. I just need to attach an embroidery frame. Just give me a second. Just attach this embroidery frame. Okay, so that doesn't shout at me. We're gonna say stop. And for this function, you are going to grab just a plain white, just grab it out here, white piece of paper. I'm gonna move you over here so you can see. And you're just gonna place the paper on the inside. And I'm gonna try and get you in pretty close so that you can see the red dot that's right there underneath the machine or underneath your foot. So what I do is I lower my needle and then lift it up again completely. You can either press your needle down button. And now you can see that uh, you can't really see it that closely, but the needle obviously pierced the paper. And now on this, on this screen, it gives you the option to move, that's the brightness, to move your foot up and down so that the needle placement, so mine is off a little bit. So what you would do, I'm really trying to have you get in here so you can try and so see it, but it's making a little bit of a shade. So once you move, go either to the negative, your foot goes down a bit, but then the, 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 the lead laser light or the lead LED light, it's not a laser light, it's LED light, moves to the back of my, the hole that the needle has just pierced through the fabric, through the paper. If you go to the plus side of the numbers, so here, the plus side of the numbers, the foot slightly moves up. And if you can, I don't know if you really, you can't really see it, but if you move it up, mine is on the moment, on plus seven, is the needle, the, the LED light shows exactly, or, or shines exactly on the hole that the needle has just punched through the paper. So that is the way you would then just align, ah, let me just get this back up, align the laser light to where your needle position is. So great feature to use as well. And then on the last page of the on-screen settings, we have the Wi-Fi um, settings. So turn it on. And then your wireless LAN setup wizard, you're going to use that. And it's going to search for all the Wi-Fi um, signals that it can pick up. You're gonna select your Wi-Fi and it tells me it already has information saved for this particular Wi-Fi. But if it didn't have it, you would have to, to punch in the password of your Wi-Fi. 
you know, all the special characters, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, letters, you would do all of that and then tell the machine, okay, and it's going to connect. So this is specifically when you are using the Snap app. Your machine and your phone has to be on the same Wi-Fi network for them to talk to each other. But we'll do that at a later stage. We'll go through the, through the Snap app. You can change your machine's name if you'd like to give her a little name. Otherwise, they we always say they get quite um, temperamental. So it's just great to personalize your machine, especially if you maybe have more than one. The Snap app would pick up this name um, that you have, um, yeah, just the name you've, you've given your machine. The rest of the settings, you don't have to worry. These are all the, the MAC address and the proxy settings. It's really not something we play with. And or you can reset the entire machine or the network settings if you choose to, or maybe if you're selling your machine and you don't want them to be able to connect to your Wi-Fi. That is, and that is the settings. Does anybody have any questions up to the Laura, I know you have a BP. So are you fine with the settings so far? Anything you want me to explain again? We're going to go to our next one here at the top. These are all the videos that's available on screen. So I've just ticked operations. Let's do basic operations. And I can say, okay, let's see how you wind the bobbin. So it will show you picture by picture. How are you going to wind the bobbin? Or you can go to videos. And you can say, let's do settings, Wi-Fi settings, for example. And it's going to give you a little video. It doesn't have any sound. And you can press play. It's just loading. And loading. You can either let's choose embroidery and how to frame. Let's see if this one pops up. There we go. And you're going to press play. So then it's just going to go through the video, inserting your embroidery arm. And also, so always know you have to, your machine has to be off when you insert that embroidery unit so you can go and watch all these videos on your time otherwise if you know what to do that's fine and you also have some app guidance which we would do at a later stage the next button here at the top it tells you it's going to automatically lower your pressure foot so it's basically going to lock your screen but it doesn't lock these buttons no, it does. Huh. Okay, there I learned something as well. It does lock these buttons, so you can't do anything. So you can safely remove a needle. That's it. Oh, that's it's me. Okay, function. See, we all learn something new every day. And I kind of get all the features confused. I mess, uh, mix it with this one. To unlock it, you just click on it again. Next to it, we have our screen lock, which also locks everything. Okay, so both locks the machine but specifically we use the second or the first one for changing needles and, and like safely changing needles so that someone doesn't accidentally press a button because believe me it does happen and then we have our home screen if you are somewhere and you don't know where you went into and you just want to go back you just press home okay so those are all the settings of the machine like i said earlier if you press the wi-fi key it just straightly, directly brings you up to the Wi-Fi screen of your settings. And you don't have to go through all of the six pages to get to it. Okay. We're going to do, go into the embroidery screen. Like I said earlier, these are called thumbnails. You have your lettering here at the side and all of your extra frames that's available. I'm going to choose, let's choose this butterfly. Love it. Love this butterfly. And now you can see there's only, there's quite a few whites and warm grays, brass colors available. 
I can also mirror image it if I choose to. It's not going to show it now. Or I can change the background over here. So it gives me a kind of like an indication if I can see it better. If you're happy with the picture that you've selected, you can select set and it's going to drop it on your embroidery screen. So here at the top, you have the size of your picture, but you also have one next to that as well. You have two separate sizing, like I'm gonna say displays on the screen. The reasoning for that is if I decided to add, let's say a name, let's just do Anna. We'll play around. Okay, so Anna is on my screen at the moment. So I can either choose on the side to change one letter at a time or to change the whole letter or the whole word. I can change the spacing, I can open it up, or I can close it and bring the letters closer together, or I can just reset it. I'm wanting to press with my finger. I can also array the entire word. So I can write it so it writes up, or I can change my angle and say what I want it rather to go down. You just hold in on this button. It takes quite a while to get there, to change the angle. And as you can see, slowly but surely it moves. Okay. Or you can what we call array, as right in a little bow, and you can close, open it up, or close it. Close, 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 and have it all just in a round circle, or we can just prefer to write it straight. You can also change sometimes what we all had to do on the previous machines. We had to either select, we always had to select small, medium, or large. But previously, if it didn't fit the frame, you had to delete the whole word and start writing from the beginning. But now I can change my entire word sizing by just clicking on it. But your entire word has to be selected. I'm going to leave it on large because I want to see what I'm writing. And if I've decided to write a second name, I can press enter. And let's just say maybe the surname was Miller. Now you can either decide to align it to the right, middle align it, or left align it. And as you can see the name, the top name jumps around from right, middle, left, or like left, middle, right. Okay, but I'm going to delete, uh, you can either put a spacing as well, but you can also delete if you decide not to. Oh, I missed a letter, Anna. Okay, so we're gonna set, and we're gonna go back to our screen here at the top. So now you can see your, your sizes have changed. Let me just go in there for you a little bit. Okay, so as you can see here, you have two pictures, a little square within a square and a circle within the big square. So that gives you the size of both of your designs. Okay. But when I've selected only one of these designs, there's a little red block that drops around it. Okay. So that size, the second one, just a circle within the square, changes to the size of whichever picture is selected. That's how that works. Okay. So, or you can see the entire size to know which frame to use, or just if someone told you sometimes people are very specific, the name has to be three millimeters high, you can go and change the size specifically for that one. Very nice function to have. Next to that, it tells you on your X and your X is the bottom one and your your Y axis, how many degrees did you move it? Or how many millimeters, so left or right? If you go back to your school days, you'd remember this is your Y axis and that is your X axis. So you can see exactly how much you moved it. So if the power went off, you don't have to worry about writing these down. Sorry your machine would automatically pick it up uh, and bring back and recall your design. So next to you or below that, we have this little circle. And that is how many degrees did you move the name or did you rotate the name? So I'm gonna select my name and I'm gonna set, um, rotate it by 10 degrees. So it's gonna pick up, it has rotated by 10 degrees. If you rotate to the other side, 
it goes to a higher number. So 350, 360, 340. Yeah. Or you can reset the entire name. You can move it around. It brings up these little arrows at the bottom. You can either move it around by clicking and dragging, or you can move specifically around by selecting the arrows. If you click the one in the middle, it's going to bring it back to the center of your frame, or your embroidery screen. I'm going to say OK. The move arrows come up in quite a few different um, tabs on the machine. So you can just directly go move, or you can say, but I want to change the size. The client told me they wanted three millimeters. That's 3.1, but they also want it close, close to the, I don't think my butterfly is in the middle. No, it's not. So I can just align the two. You can also change and override the size. So something specifically that's great about the VP and the XP, we only we were only able to change our embroidery designs by 10% bigger or 10% smaller. But now on the BP, we have these two functions at the top here. And this one makes smaller and that one makes bigger. So it's going to change it back to its original size, which is what it was. But now I can go smaller, quite smaller. It's still going to stop at a certain point. But if I go back, let's delete this and just go add it again. Okay. If I select the size now and I make it smaller, it's going to stop at a 10 by 15. So you can hear the machine going beep, beep. So it doesn't want to go any further than that. Or if I make it bigger, it beep beeps and then I can't make it any bigger. So these two functions here allow me to almost overwrite that setting and tell, tell the machine to make it smaller than that 10%. And it will adjust its stitches a, a little bit. It doesn't do quite on top of it. So it will allow for it to go bigger and smaller now. See, now it went further away than um, my previous 10% bigger. Okay. You can also just reset it by selecting that little square. If I was in my alphabet, it brings up my small, medium and large again. And just center it, move it up, and I know everything is aligned. Okay. What I can also do, these will come up later if I select both of my designs. So I can jump between selecting or I can select both that's on my screen and say okay. Now I can group them and create one picture. So now if I move it around, I move both. Or I can just ungroup again. But I have to ungroup in my group settings here at the bottom as well. Sorry for shaking the camera. Next, we have our duplicate screen. So now I can duplicate the name. Whichever one is selected, it's selected is the one that would duplicate. So let me just undo what I did. Okay. If you selected your designs you can depending on the designs not all of them do that you can change the density of your design so usually when it comes to names i up my density on towels specifically or those very fluffy um uh what is it called not an apron uh -huh. gowns sorry forgot the word there for a second so especially when it's a, f a fabric that has all those fibers it's great to up the density just a little bit. You can go to 110 maybe, um, but 100 absolutely works. I just dropped it. Works stunning, but the option is there for you. And you would still use your Avalon over your fiber types of fabric to keep the fibers from coming through your fab, um, through your embroidery design. We'll go do that one in a moment. Okay, let's maybe do that first. So for now, I'm going to delete that. We'll bring it. No, uh, yeah, we'll bring it back in a moment. We have this function over here, and it's almost like a multiple key, but it's not the same as duplicate. Duplicate, you saw, it just brought in the name almost over the 
oh, the other name. So I'm going to delete that. Delete the one name. Go back to this duplicate um, screen. So I can tell it either up or down or left or right. So now if I select the plus, it's going to bring up another one. So if you have to do the same design over and over again, you can go add names as many as you like. What you can also do here is you can move the names further away or closer together, or you can just reset the entire design. But if you choose to, let's go add, let's just pull them apart a bit. Add, 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 add. Open them up a bit and then go to the left, to the right. So now I can add a full line and I can also pull them apart a bit and add another one. And it's going to tell you, sorry, it cannot. It's outside the embroidery frame. Maybe if we move them closer together, ha, maybe we can add another one. So that is quite a nice function. If you have to add multiple names and you just don't want to use the duplicate key, uh, where is it? There's the duplicate key. It's uh, grayed out at the moment because my full embroidery, big embroidery frame has been filled out. So that is a great function to use for multiple designs. I'm just going to undo. I just want my name back. Let's just make it a bit bigger so you can see it. Okay, great. Okay. So now here's that applique. There we go. This applique embroidered applique distance. These two work together. So in my settings, I told it I want my applique distance or my satin stitch to be three millimeters away. So I'm going to select my applique feature and it's going to create a line all around it. I can undo that. Let's go back to the settings and up this, have it go all the way up. If I select it now, you'll see it's quite further away from the word or from your name whatever you're writing if you want to make badges. So that's a great function right there. I'm just gonna bring in back our butterfly. Okay, let's go edit. Next to that, you have, it's a thread spool with multiple colors next to it, a block of multiple colors. And this is where you can change the colors of your design. Usually this was just available on um, embroidery softwares, but now they've brought it in to our machines. It's great, even though the very first one in the range, the Hop Brother embroidery range can do this. So say for example, you'd rather wanted a pink butterfly. You can change your warm gray to a warm pink. So now you can see those little dots. Just get you in closer here. Little dots changed color. So going to the next color, you just select on the next color, it's going to show you what um, color it wants. And let's say you want a deep red and for white. Um, I think I designed it a little bit backwards. Let's go that one. Let's do maybe a yellow. Oh, that can work. And your white, you want a bright pink. Oh, that's an ugly pink. Let's go to that one. I like that one better. And then you would carry on and change the colors. So we used pink, for grass we used yellow, for white we used the dark fuchsia. And now you can just go down and see what's left. It's those last little dots. Let's just for fun of it make them blue so we can see them. And the last brass, let's also make it blue. So just for the fun of it. To see your design, you can select on this picture right here and you can zoom in. Now the blue doesn't really work there. Green doesn't work, but let's go for it for argument's sake. At the bottom of the screen, once you've selected this zoom in function so that you can move closer into your embroidery design, we have what we call the stitch simulator. So I can press play and it's going to stitch out or show me how my design is going to stitch out. You can make it a little bit faster or very fast and it's just gonna zoom through it. I'm just gonna make it slower, 
So it fills up the picture. Doesn't that look nice? Beautiful. You can also stop it and pause it in between if you wish, or you can select the frame. So it's telling me it's only going to fit in my biggest and my, I think that's a 240. Yes. And it's not going to fit in my 5x7 or my 1019. So it gives you those two options. What you can also do, just on before we go to the next stage, if you do not like this, or, or if you, no, let me just get the wording right, yes. If you select OK here at the bottom of the screen now, and you go to the next um, embroidery screen, you will not be able to come back and, re and reset the colors. If you do not like this, now is the time to reset it back to its original colors. If you say OK and it changed it, it will not change the original picture in your thumbnails. If you bring in that design, you can still change the colors. But if you've selected OK, you cannot come back and reset. You'll have to select them yourself. We also have this color shuffling, which is great. So you can do random vivid colors. And it just gives you sometimes the weirdest colors. Like, I mean, here's black with orange. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. Or you can just tell it, ask it to please refresh. Okay, but let's go back. Don't want to give it time. Go back again. I can also do soft colors, which is the one I like more. That one looks quite nice. Or you can do that as also, a, that one also looks nice. If you like these, you can mark them as a favorite and add the little heart. And you can pull up your favorites. Oh, I wonder where's my little owl. Okay. So you can either do these the vivid or a gradient. Oh, that one is gray. Let's refresh. Let's see what it gives you. Then it gives you yellow. And it goes to gray. Oh, that one looks quite nice. So you can just play with it if you don't know which colors you would actually like. So we're just going to say OK. Then we have those two have now disappeared because we took the name away. So let's just go get Anna again. And now, there we go. We're going to set it. So all those settings that we hear at the bottom, if you decided to change the text, it would bring the screen up for you again. So say, for example, you don't like the font. You can change the font here at the bottom and make it all curly or decide, no, rather one block letters you can change it as well or you can decide but mm, i didn't change my spacing earlier i wanted it to be more open move it closer and say okay i'll just reset it there but i can also change one letter there's a little block with a, re a red line on the right of my letter so i can say but i just want to edit one letter at a time. So let's say we just go to the A. So you have your arrows that you would jump around with here. So let's say, for example, I want the A to be cursive. And I also need to change the spacing a little bit because my A is over, but it's only going to move that one away from the rest of the word. I can also decide to move that letter up or I can decide to move the letter down. So here's as well where you can customize the machine, the, or customize your name. So you don't have to bring in the A and then bring in the NNA to align everything straight. So a lot of editing that you can do. So if you're happy with that, I'll just go back to the editing. You can also cut the letters. So say, for example, you've made a spelling mistake. This last A had to be an E. See, there's a little knife that jumps around. You would jump it. So as you can see, this whole name is grouped at the moment, but I can cut it and now this one is on its own. So I can also decide from here, but maybe I want a funnier letter or I can just delete it completely and go add a new letter. Say, for example, I can't remember we had as that font, I think. I uh, just need to go to small letters, do an E, 
and now I would just have to move it in place. I can either click and drag or I can move it very precisely with my arrows. It's a very fun function to play with. But now as you can see, this letter is all on its own and those three first letters have red squares around them. They are all grouped together. I'm gonna do these two in a moment. Then we have multicolor. That is going to change my machine to stop after all my settings so that the machine stops after every alphabet letter. So now when I go embroidery, see it's picking up. I have two small embroidery frames. Let me just press all the right buttons to get the frame out. Um, sorry, I just had to get my mind in the right order there. So the multicolor, go to embroidery. And now when you go down, we'll go to the screen in a moment. You're gonna jump, I just wanna jump down. I just wanna jump another one. You can see here all the different alphabet letters. What's also very fun is now I can change all my alphabet letters in the colors. So it's on A, I can change it to that pink. I can choose that one to that one. Let's do a green and then your last one could be that. Because your, because your machine is going to stop after every letter. Or I can, you cannot undo, let me see. Yes, let me go back to black. If you unselect that color, everything goes back and your machine would work the word as one. Everybody with me so far there? We'll do those last two. There you go, more. The one connects with the design center. Great. Thanks, me. Thanks, Laura. Oh, my eye keeps on. Sorry about that. Okay. So for now, I'm going to delete the name so that we can play. Okay, let's quickly go to that screen first. So you can just see the bottom. So we went to, let me just return one, sorry. Here at the bottom is your embroidery. So this is like your editing embroidery edit screen. And next we're gonna go to embroidery. We're ready, we've done all the changes we want. We've added names, we've deleted names, we've changed letters, we've made them bigger, we've made them smaller. We've rotated, we've played around with all of that. So once we're happy with all of that, we can come and Embroider, we can come and start our embroidery design. Everything is zeroed, we didn't move the design around. You can still move it around now if you wish. Okay. And if you go to layout, you can still rotate it a bit, do the basting stitch. So on layout here at the top, you can move it and rotate. And here's that basting stitch we spoke about in the beginning when we were busy with the on-screen settings. So now it automatically puts it first and it's just going to embroider a block around my design. It makes very long stitches. It's almost like a centimeter stitch so that you can pull it out quite easily. To be honest, I cannot remember what that one is for for a moment. Just give me a moment to remember that one. This one right here is an awesome function. I want to go add another one of those butterflies. Okay, and I'll move the one up and move the one down. Okay. I'm just going to turn the basting st stitch off for a moment. Okay. So they both move as one. This function right here, if I go to my screen with the thread layout, it is going to work if you look at it and look at this dial where it moves around. It's first going to embroider the entire first butterfly or the one at the top. So you're going to have 16 color changes because there's eight in one butterfly but if you select let me just go back because i'm in the middle of a in a design i could have also just gone into my stitches and selected zero but anyway we'll go into that in a moment so say for say you don't want to change thread 16 times you only want to do it eight times you can select this one right here it has two blue spools and one that's white if you select this button, 
it groups together the first two of the same color, the next two, the third, and the fourth, and so on. So it's going to embroider the side of the top butterfly and then the side of the bottom butterfly. And it automatically groups it together that you don't have to press the start button again. It will do the top and it will move to the bottom. You would re-thread and it will go to the next color and do both of them because it is the same color. So the machine knows it can just carry on embroidering or you can just turn it off and it will throw it back so that you can do um, 16 color changes. It doesn't change your number of color changes because it still picks up that it is two different designs and they both have eight colors. So just keep that in mind as well. Here at the bottom where I planned around earlier, this little um, minus and plus sign with a needle, it means how many stitches forward. So if you look at this one, it's 30,262 stitches. So you can either jump, if you use the arrows, jump between colors, or you can jump between stitches. And as you can see, my number picked up there, it's 10,180, or I can jump 10, and now it's negative 10, jump backwards or jump forward. Mostly we would jump backward, especially if you've broken or your threads broke in the middle of your design. I usually jump back 20 stitches because if the machine works about, I'd say anything between five and eight stitches before it stops because it still has to slow down. So I like to just have it go back a little bit further than just, just where it broke. I want to do cover that area neatly and nicely so that the design comes out very nicely and you'll pick that up that have quite a number of people don't actually jump back when their thread is broke especially like big companies that do thousands and thousands of logos they just carry on where they left off and it, it is really not nice so that is that is something just, that just comes in with the quality of the work that you deliver or like you can see now I'm on color six of 16. I can just jump back to the complete start of my design and it would zero everything out. Your next function that you have is a position, needle position. So at the moment, it gives me a green plus here in the middle. And I can say, but I don't want you to give me the center center of my design. Go to the top of the center of my, my frame. And it's going to give you this. So depending on how you framed, if you've listened to the embroidery introduction to embroidery webinars, this is a great one to use, especially I frame. Sorry, I'm still moving my embroidery frame. Just get it out of the way. Um, it I frame golf shirts so that I can get my middle, oh my not my middle, my left bottom corner of my design so that it lines up with the golf shirt tab. So have a look at that. It's just different ways. So if you frame and for the back, we use the middle bottom or the side bottom, depending on how your word is laid out. So this is just to have different placement settings. It's also if you do multi-hooping and you're busy working with the grid, great function to use to move your, your starting position. Or I can trial the design and just get this embroidery frame my paper out of the way it will trial and let me just move you that way if I select the trial button it gives me this screen first and you have to select show me the entire design so my embroidery unit is going to move to go around the entire design so if my frame was in it moved to the side move down so it's going to show you exactly where your picture would fall in your embroidery frame. Let me just go back. There we go, back to its middle. Or you can select your arrows again, your positioning points. And when you select one of them, that's bottom left, bottom right, depending on where you want, you'll see your embroidery unit moves around, whether you have your frame in or not. And then you can also save this to memory. So if you know this is the design you're going to use multiple times, you can save it either to a USB or save it to the machine. Just very important to know, these machines save as a P, 
PXH. So here, you can go to either your machine or your USB. So here you can see, if you save any of the pictures to the machine, closer, it saves it as a PHX and it's like a safety feature so that you cannot take the design somewhere else. If it's a picture that you bring in with a USB, I don't have my USB connected at the moment, you will have PES designs, so PES, or it will also pick up DST files. So depending on which one you have, you can use them both. It doesn't read the other files. Let me just go back, grab that one so that we can do the last two. Okay. So I said here we'll do the last two here as well and play a little bit in the design center. So we'll start with the design center and do its basic functions. And then on the next occasion, we'll do the snap app. So we've brought in our butterfly. Let's rotate a bit so that it can look a little bit different. Okay. So here at the bottom, it looks like a just a square for you guys now, but if you can see these little squiggly lines, that's what I call them at the moment, within the, the little blue block, but it is actually a meandering quilting stitch. So if I select this design, there we go. So meandering is what they also call the W's and M's. So if you look closely, it works as a W and then it goes to an M and a W and it goes to an M. So it's, it's, I struggle to do this one, if I'm going to be honest with you. So here the machine is going to create a distance line. It's that black line that you see, but it's not going to embroider that black line. I get that question quite often. It's just a line created around your design, but it follows the outline of the design, as you can see. And it's going to ask you, what frame are you going to embroider this design in? Because if you change it, here it throws it out automatically, it's not going to fit in that one. It gives you blue blocks around it, like a gray block. And go to the next one. There we go. So you can see there, okay, a 240 by 240 is going to work. If my butterfly was in the middle, the 200 by 200 would have also worked. And I can also move the distance line away. And as you can see now, these lines on the inside disappear. And I'm going to just, so that that one also disappears. So it creates a nice offset. It's either called an offset line or a distance line, depending on how you were taught. If we work with these machines, it's a distance line. On the scan and cut, it's called an offset line. I can also change the spacing of these W's and M's. Let's go quite small and preview. It takes a moment. There we go. Now you can see they are very, very tiny lines. Or we can make them a bit bigger again. Let's go. Let's see what the biggest is. Five. I can see there's literally just one line. Okay, let's go back. And let's do about two and a half. Or 2.4, it's fine. It's also quite still big. Mm, let's do 1.3, 1, yeah, there we go. That one can work. Okay. Let's do one, see what it does. So this is a nice function just to play with, see what it's going to, what it's going to do. Ah, that one looks better. Yes. Okay. If you're happy with that, you can tell the machine, okay, and you're happy with it, and it's automatically going to bring in that meandering function for you. And then you go to the embroidery machine. At the bottom, it will throw you, it will give you your last color, which is the blue meandering that's around the design. Okay, we're gonna go back and I'm just, uh, here you go back and undo the, um... oh, I'm so glad. So glad, Laura, that now you know how to do this one. But I'm gonna give you some more decorative stitches. So now we have our butterfly. If you want to use this function, this is called a stamping tool, this little flower here at the bottom. So that is when you want to go to the design center and add all those fancy little fancy decorative stitches that is available on the machine. So you would first, always first, 
edit your design, move it around, change the size, um, rotate it even more, all of that. Then you would go to your embroidery screen and you would embroider this beautiful design. You can then return, leave your embroidery frame with the picture that you have just done in your machine. You can also do this beforehand. It doesn't matter if you do it after the picture or before the picture. Just know that after you've selected the stamping tool, you cannot change the design anymore. You cannot change the size. You cannot move it around. You cannot rotate it anymore because it's going to give you a distance line again, but you don't have all those extra editing functions. So move it again so that all of these little extra squiggly points your distance line is nice and neat. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just don't want it to go struggling and embroidering one line there on the inside. And then if you're happy with that distance line, you're gonna say memory. Then it's gonna tell you to recall this, this, this stamp pattern. You'll find it in my designs in the circle and square. Don't know why they changed the stamping tool. Um, design but that is the second part of your stamping tool then so now this design is already embroidered it's in the frame it's hooped you've done it you've done your colors now you can go out and you can go home and we would go to my design my design center so these two at the top and that one the third one is all for your snap app we'll do that at a later stage we're going to play with these here at the side. So, but first we have to recall that distance line we created earlier. So the machine told us it's here in the circle and square, our stamping tool. And there's our little flower at the top. You have all these other um, patterns as well, but just know the machine will actually embroider these patterns if you choose them. There's some more and there's some open lines, but we want our offset line, or our distance line. So I'm going to select the pattern of the one I've just did. So the last one was the one that was at an angle, not the one that was straight. And I'm going to say, okay. So now it's going to bring in that distance line on my screen. Let me see if I can just put all so that you can see it better. There we go. So now it's giving you, I'll move it away when I'm using those bottom functions, but it's just pocket, it's saving and it's back. I'll tell you, I just want you to be able to see clearly what I'm doing. The first set, if you can see, they are in little gray blocks grouped together. This is very much the same as paint. If you can remember paint on the PC, as far as I know, it's been removed from the PC or it might still be there depending on the PC version. But this is very much the same as paint we've played with when we were children. So the first group is also a lot what we're going to use while doing the Snap app. But you can also decide if you want to draw something or digitize something yourself. Remember, very limited digitizing software in here. You can you can create designs, but it's only it's very two dimensional. We go more into that on what you can and cannot design um, when we do the Snap app. So you can write your own name and you can change the color. Let me just grab a color that's going to stand out. You can either use, let's zoom in, and you would move this block around to go where you want. Don't click on the screen. You're going to create lines to move it around. Okay. So you can either have changed the color beforehand to draw in green, but you can also take your bucket and drop it on the colors or on the letters and it's going to change them green. But I'm gonna undo all of that. That's not what we wanna do at the moment. Just zoom out. Okay, so the first one is when you wanna draw your own, your own design. Next is the, the second block here of designs or um, settings. You would go into this, it's called a manual. You go into your manual. You can either do the meandering again or you can select the decorative stitches, which is it gives you the bubble decorative stitches and it brings up this select option. And then it opens up a world of possibilities and you can select any one of these designs. Let's just for the fun of it, go and select the fish. 
you'd say okay and let's choose a nice let's choose that magenta color again and you'd say okay so now as you can see your paintbrush is selected here so you can either go and select let me just undo that because it was too close and go close around your design but the reason just when you draw something yourself make sure there's no open spaces open spaces okay but the reason we created that offset line is so we can use our bucket and we can just simply drop it all around again you can select your this is where i would let me just undo that play around and use my different hoop so let's say 240 by 240 and then it's going to bring it in if i now select my bucket and drop it oh yeah yuck. what you can also do is just draw a line here at the bottom you would just do it a lot more straight than i am that line is not straight at all why are you doing that you're supposed to lock it out okay but either way it gives you the option to select the frame. What I would also sometimes do to get my frame size is I would go select any one of these patterns, or specifically like not any one, the square, and I would change the size. Because you're not always going to work in your um, 360 by uh, 240 frame. So I would change it, make it as big as possible to fit my frame. We're for argument's sake gonna do the 240 by 240, so I'll up it to let's say 238 and now if I drop it's going to stay on the inside because so that is what I want I wanted to work on the inside of the specific uh, specific frame I don't want it to go bigger because I cannot rehoop if you want to rehoop it is possible that's where your snap app comes into play you can also change this now you can see but mm, I don't like those fish I want to just do this random beautiful pattern I don't want pink anymore. I want green. And I can again take, I can either take my design, my, my paintbrush and color it in. No matter where you go, it's going to keep your pattern. Or I can take my bucket and I can just drop it in. That looks better actually for the butterfly than fish. <laughs> okay. You can also erase, use your eraser. You can choose the different shapes you want at the bottom i'm fine with that circle and say button i don't want you to go there and i prefer you not going inside my butterflies antennas just wipe that out as well and if you decided but okay now you have to go in there that looks terrible you can just undo here at the bottom until everything is done. Let's just drop that back. If you are happy with all of that, that is these functions you absolutely absolutely have to play with to get used to them. On where where's what? We'll go into this a little bit more when we do the design center. The design center, the snap app. But these are the functions mostly for the using the stamping tool and wanting to do a decorative stitch around it why is it giving me a line there let's just undo this all and drop it okay now we're going to go select next because we want to edit we want to play with this we want to create something you can again open up the design let's say set you can also change the angle on your design this one doesn't really have a direction if you were if we kept with the fish you would see you can change it if it, it was all straight you can change it to be in an angle this one is basically a random pattern the next function right here is an outline so it means it's going to embroider a block all around and end it off it's not just going to end with a random um, designs around it very something very important to note the machine would always see here and let me just go back so I can zoom in for you. Okay, where was that one? Okay, so if you can see uh, me, 
just make it bigger. It's preview. It's going to tell you it's not going to be saved. Oh, next, it extends a return. And there we go. If you can see, uh, there's a. Let me just quickly change this, so otherwise it's not going to do what I wanted to do now to show you properly. doesn't want to do it at the moment but let me get you in here okay. where's my pattern I can't go back now so over here you see there's one end that just stops and here at the top there's another end that just stops the machine will always find the best route sorry I'm keeping on touching the screen that's why the machine is going to be um, it will always find the best route, so it doesn't have to stop and jump over. Sometimes it would, but it would always find the best and the quickest route to just be able to run and not stop. So it will create this continuous line. The reason the machine doesn't want to go next is because the frame is too big. So let's just clear this all. Bring back our offset line or distance line. And I'm just going to drop that around. Okay. So we can make them a bit, I don't really want to make them smaller. Say, so, okay, the direction doesn't really matter. There's no direction here. And let's leave our um, outline on. Now it's telling me I can go back to the, or oh, continue next so that it previews. But it's not going to save any of this data. And then you can see it makes it bigger. If you're happy with that, you can either memory it if you choose, but we don't always want to save to the... <coughs> Sorry about that. We always want to save... We don't, we don't always want to save to the machine's memory. And you're rarely going to come back and change the your butterfly that we did earlier to the same size or to the same degree of rotation. So it's, it's really... It's almost, I want to say, not necessary to save the design, but if you want to, if you save the butterfly that you've changed the size, you can change this one and you know this is a pattern you're going to use a lot, but like the combination of the butterfly and this background. And it tells you, once it jumps to the embroidery side, the embroidery screen, you won't be able to go back into the design center or make any changes. It is kind of futile to change the size. You cannot really move it around because your butterfly is already embroidered in your frame. You just want to do this decorative stitch around. You're going to say embroidery and you are going to do the decorative stitch all around. So it tells you it's on the bigger side the frame can do. You haven't moved it, you haven't rotated it. And it tells you it's going to do 18,112 stitches, take you 27 minutes and it's only one color. You can do the trial again if you want to, but it's going to embroider the full embroidery frame. Any questions on that part of the machine? Because that is basically my story today. Have you gotten more comfortable with the machine? Any questions before we move on to just cleaning the machine as always? Oh, Laura, I'm so great you've learned some new things. You must please send us pictures of everything that you do. We'd always love to see them. So I'll give you guys the, when we're gonna do the design snack, the app on the phone so that we can play a little bit more with the design center. This is just like the basics, but get those and then like good at those and then we'll start playing a little bit more with all the other functions okay so we're happy with everything we've done this design we finished it's time to clean our machine we're going to press the home button and we're going to go home and we're going to go to our embroidery screen again 
and you're going to move your embroidered unit back to it like it's a neutral position I would almost say and you're just going to move it out of the way when you press the button your embroidery unit moves back moves all the way to home so like the way you get it in the box and that's this one right here so always try and move it away and out of the way especially when you're traveling with your machine and you're going to turn the machine off now we're going to clean the machine so just as a quick one you just place your finger here at the back and push this gray unit forward you can if you choose to remove those two screws if your machine's really really dirty but then also just remove the embroidery the bobbin case look how dirty my machine is perfect time to clean it you can either use the the little brush that came with the machine i like using a this is a 12 millimeter paintbrush and you clean everywhere always make sure there's no little thread stuck here in your tension plates and just start um, brushing it with your brush try to make sure that it's um, like a soft to medium bristle bristle brush sorry for that tongue twister and but it's not a, a hard one that's going to scratch the machine look how dirty my machine is this is terrible actually I don't really want to show you so you're just going to wipe all the way on the inside clean the brush on the side not close to the machine and wipe it out and clean it you can also just press it here in press it in at random spaces to make sure you get all the fluff and this is something you do at least once a week maybe every two weeks depending on how often you embroider and if you do towels and nappies i recommend you do this um, more often than just once a week twice a week if everything is clean you have two little dots, like a triangle and a dot, on your embroidery case. Just want to get in close here. So on the side, with the with this half open edge at the back, right here in the front, you have a triangle on your bobbin case, and you have a little white dot on your just behind this screw on your machine. And those two have to align. When you put the bobbin casing back and this is also called an inner rotary hook and this silver piece where it drops into is your outer rotary hook so if you want the more technical terms and there's not really a big wiggle on this on the bobbin case you don't want it to move around a lot if it moves around it's time for a service and you would just drop this silver plate back and push it to the back and you can thread your machine as normal. My bobbin is basically empty. Always make sure it goes anti-clockwise. Oh, anti-clockwise. Like holding my bobbin down and cutting it off. So same as all the other machines, maintenance is very important, especially if you want the machine to last very long. And as well, you do not, um, just turn this around, you do not oil your, your embroidery machines please i've had some machines where there's oil underneath the bobbin case we do not oil the machines they will oil the machine when it goes in for its service so the new machine we um oil is our overlocker but if that's a serger it has a lot more moving parts here at the bottom especially on the upper and lower loopers okay that is my story ladies and gentlemen I don't think we have a gentleman on the show on, on today no don't but that is the training for today i hope you've learned some new things and can use your bp to its ultimate potential